The headline number on inflation was down, and so is the stock market. What's going on here? Let's dive in. Welcome back, everybody. Don Miller here from Market Beat. I've got a special day planned for us today. I have two guests today. We're going to talk about the market, where it's headed, um, where we think it's headed. We're going to talk inflation. We're going to talk the possibility of recession, and we're going to talk about stocks uh, that we'll be reporting on next week. Guys, how are you doing today? Doing real good, Don. Thomas, in your newsletter this week, and welcome back, by the way, you're on vacation and we missed you. I missed you last week. But in your newsletter that's going to go out this week, um, you're calling for the S&P uh, actually reaching a top, which is going to be concerning to some people, uh, yours truly uh, included, uh, which is funny because the the week before you left on vacation, you weren't necessarily on that page. What are you seeing now? Uh, what kind of evidence uh, gives credence to your argument that, that we may be reaching a top on the S&P 500, Thomas? All right. T to clarify, really, uh, two weeks ago, my position was that we were nearing a top. A top was at hand. The market was rallying really for no good reason, and that a top was going to be reached. But the question was where and when it was going to be reached. And like I say in, in the newsletter, it's kind of funny how things change just in the course of a week or so. And it seems like that top is in place and not just because, I mean, it's, I'm calling it arbitrarily, the market has fallen for two straight weeks now and we have a, a technical top in place and mm -hmm. it looks like the this correction could get a lot deeper. Chris, I, I want you to speak to this a little bit. We had CPI come out this week uh, right. and every time that we get news like that, uh, uh, big market moves could be, could be up, could be down. Um, inflation, uh, according to CPI, is uh, on a relatively cool side, uh, seems to be uh, cooling off a little bit. Core inflation is still up there, though. Uh, what do you think about the, the S&P and, and, and all this that, that Tom is mentioning in, in his newsletter? Well, you know, as far as as far as where the S&P is at, um, you know, it's been going up, I think, for the last couple of weeks because this narrative exists that we are on track for the the soft landing that everybody's talking about. Right, um, right, right. I I don't I don't want to speculate on that. Um, I've been of the opinion, and you know this very well, Don and Thomas does too, that we were in a recession in 2022 when mm -hmm. we had the two consecutive quarters of negative GDP. Um, you can I'm sure the economists will disagree with me, and people can play financial gymnastics with the numbers, but to me, that just was a core baseline that said the economy was in a recession. Whether we've come out of that or not, um, I'll leave that to other people to decide. So if we are heading into a recession, to me, that's the double dip, not necessarily the, the sign of the first recession. Um, but the market, to me, has been going up because um, investors were basically saying they believe the narrative that we're going to have the soft landing and that we're going to steer clear of, of this recession that everybody's been talking about for the last year. That, that, that buzzword, uh, soft landing, is one that we've used on uh, ourselves. Uh, right. We've been guilty of it on this channel ourselves. Uh, Thomas, uh, back to you just for a second. Um, do you feel like, and, and, and I agree with Chris, by the way, that we, we already had, a, or we're in a recession, or we're in a recession Ooh, sure. in 2022. Um, what other factors might drive us that direction besides the Fed? Because I've got a point here I want to make. Um, the people that watch this channel are going to know what that point is, but I want to want your take on what other factors are involved here uh, to, to, that could move us towards a recession. Towards a recession, well, these factors all all kind of play in together, and and with what Chris was saying with the S and P five hundred is it's been rallying because the recession that we've been expecting hasn't shown up, and so it allowed yes. the market to arrive to this higher level. But now we're back up at this high level and the fear of recession, the scare of it is still there. But now it seems like it could be even even more possible because inflation is still present. You know, the CPI dat data was a tenth cooler than expected, but it was still two tenths hotter than last month. The core numbers and the headline number, the um, YLY numbers are still very hot. They do not suggest the Fed is going to cut rates. They suggest the Fed will <clears throat> raise rates again. 
And then to the point that I think is what you want me to say is that <laughs> oil prices are rising. Oil prices are rising steadily. Oil prices broke out to a new uh, one-year high this past week. And uh, I think you used this chart that I made for you last week. Uh, but oil prices are very, very correlated to inflation. When you look at the oil chart over the last two years and you see inflation spike up and peak out at over 5%, those peaks coincide with the peaks in oil. Right now, oil prices are headed back up to a price level that is coincident with those peaks in inflation. I don't think that there's anything that could happen from this point forward except for inflation to go up. I think mm -hmm. that people that watch the market are seeing this and they're going to start positioning for the fall, which means to me selling equities because of inflation. Mm -hmm. And that puts a top in the market. Uh, for those who... Uh haven't watched the channel just let me say this um the 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 oil price uh oil prices and the correlation with uh high, higher prices overall in inflation i should say uh you can't argue that point if you can argue that point i would love to hear from you in the comments uh because i've never been able to uh separate the two but if you've got an argument for it we surely want to hear about what you have to say on that um Earnings this so far, I, I I think are are mixed. Would you guys agree with that? Pretty mixed. <laughs> to, it, it, to mixed to negative. Well, what what I'm seeing is, and what you guys are writing about uh, week after week is um, uh, while they're meeting expectations, and I talked about this last week, those expectations are lower. Uh, there's nobody really knocking it out of the park. Apple, uh, right. Apple have everyone's eye in the stock market. Mm -hmm. um, didn't exactly uh, knock it out of the park either. I think it was their third consecutive quarter uh, reporting lower numbers. Um, right. What do you What do you think? Uh, next week we st we start retail. What do you think about what What's going to go on with earnings from retail? Because that's that's a big big uh, factor as far as uh, the economy overall is concerned too. What are you looking at? What are you seeing there, guys? I can't help but believe that the retail numbers are going to come in flat to slightly lower. Um, I think what I will be interested in next week is the retail number is going to start making a very telling statement about the state of the consumer. Um, mm -hmm. You know, the consumer has been remarkably resilient uh, there could be a lot of reasons for that, but, you know, at a certain point, that's going to 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 tap out. Um, could there be a surprise to the upside, perhaps, for some retailers? I know when I've been going shopping, I've seen a lot of people getting an early start on back-to-school shopping, so mm -hmm. that there might be some, uh, some lift to the numbers there just because of that seasonal effect. But, uh, you know, overall, I, I'm not expecting to see a, I'm, like I said, I, at best, I think you're going to be seeing flat numbers to slightly lower. Thomas, I, I, I'm going to, I'm going to ask you about one stock in particular that you wrote about in your newsletter. Um, I don't have the chart. We don't have the chart to pull it up, but people are going to know what I'm talking about. Target uh, reports next week. And since May, uh, Target essentially fell off a cliff and 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 kind of find the bottom of the canyon, if you will, and just kind of wallowed in there for a while. What are you looking at from Target? And do you think they turned the corner? Do you think, uh, or we're headed for more downside? I mean, looking at the chart, I would say that the market at large is expecting some more bad news because there's, there's no optimism in the chart. It looks like it's ready to fall through the floor and head down to, to lower levels. I mean, that's just the way the chart looks. Um, I think as far as results, uh, analyst expectations are pretty mixed across the sector. I think what Chris is saying about it being relatively flattish is probably going to be about right. The real takeaway is going to be like who loses, who wins, and when they're winning, which segments inside the business are winning because mm -hmm. Walmart and Target both said last quarter that consumers were shifting from discretionary into like health and staples, you know, so that's going to play on things. Um, with, with Target, of, of the big retailers, it really was the first one to start giving warning signs of bad things. Mm -hmm. And as the, especially with like, and specifically with, um, 
with slippage, people stealing stuff, right? That's impacting mm -hmm. margins big time. It's theft. It's a big right. deal. Um, and that story has kind of worsened over the last few quarters. Target's also been um, struggling with inventories. Um, I think maybe in the big box world target may be losing out to Walmart just because it doesn't have as much stuff. You know, it's maybe a little bit of a higher price point too. So target could be disappointing. Walmart okay. could be good. You know, it's just kind of depends on what the consumers are doing. Chris, I know you are, uh, uh, you follow retail uh, pretty closely. Uh, and he, and Thomas mentioned Walmart and I'm going to give you a chance to talk about them. Uh, put your thoughts together on Walmart for me, but um the Walmarts in my neighborhood, I don't necessarily shop there myself, but the, the parking lots always look full. It seems, you know, logical that uh, if prices are rising uh, with inflation or they're still hot uh, for a lot of families, uh, that Walmart would be a pretty popular destination for shopping. But uh, what do you think uh, Walmart reports uh, next week? Uh, my, if I had to guess, um, I would say I would expect them to be, I, I'm expecting to see a double beat. And the reason why is just, again, for the reason I just said, there's some seasonality in there. You're going to have mm -hmm. parents on a budget looking to shop and get their school supplies done, check it off the list. And Walmart's going to be an ideal place to do that. Uh, what will be more interesting to me will be what their guidance is going forward. That's to me what... You know, whenever I've listened to any of these earnings reports, whether you're talking about Apple or whether you're talking about, uh, you know, Tesla or anything, it's just what's what's the guidance going forward? Because right. that's that's far more interesting to me than as I, you know, Lacey and I have talked about this before. You know, to me, the earnings reports always kind of like your your progress report. It's like the report card that's telling you stuff that's already happened. Well, right. I don't really care about what's happened now. I just care about what, what can we do to make it better or, yeah, or right. what can we do to prevent it from getting worse in the future. Right. And that's what's more interesting to me about the earnings reports. Right. There's kind of uh, two things are important about those reports. It's like, are, are the results priced in and is the guidance yes. priced in? And the right. results being priced in is, you know, like a one or a 3% move. The guidance being priced in could be like a five or a 10% move. Yes. Yes. All right. One last question for each of you. Uh, sure. Real brief question. Um, mm -hmm. And this is going to be uh, more of a personal question, I guess. But, uh, you know, our viewers, I, we all want to know what we think personally. So after this earnings season, are you trimming? Are you adding? Or are you just holding what you got? Shares in anything that you own. You don't have to say what you own. That's not important. But mm -hmm. are you adding or trimming? My my core safety trades and my income trades, I'll probably be adding to those on dips, especially at support. But I think for, you know, buying the market at large and looking for new stuff, I will be building capital waiting for the fall. How about it, Chris? Um, largely, I, I agree with Thomas. Um, the core stuff that I, that I look at and say, these are my buy and hold forevers, my ride and dies. I'm going to be looking for any opportunity to nibble at them and, and add as I can. Um, that's, that's what I've said before, Don, you and I have talked about this. It's the kind of the buy the best, forget the rest. And, right. you know, if you're, I, I, I can kind of, I can kind of understand where if you're, if your primary goal is to, um, is to uh, maintain the wealth that you have and to preserve that there's a lot of great strategies. One would be, to be in the T bills and stuff like that, where you're getting the automatic 5%. On the other hand, if you're looking for growth, you can look at a lot of names that aren't high flyers. that are pretty safe names. I mean, I'm talking like McDonald's, I'm talking like Lowe's and mm -hmm. you can be getting a 9% return this year an 11% return on for those stocks. And that doesn't even include the dividend. So, you know, there are opportunities out there for investors. They're not necessarily in the sexy stocks, but right. they're, they're, there's good names that you can buy and you the can get a return stuff. on. Right. Those would be the stocks that I would be looking to add to. But in terms of saying stuff that's speculative, uh, you know, th th those that are guy. ones that you're going to have to you're going to have to sit tight on those a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think uh, any of uh, any of us are are the speculative type. Uh, probably people have gleaned that over over the course of watching our videos. Right. Hey, I want to thank both of you for coming on yeah. today. Uh, Chris, thanks for joining us.
Uh, we might do this again. This was fun. Hope you uh -huh. guys had fun too. Everyone, if you like this video and it's done you any good, we'd appreciate it if you subscribe. If you haven't already, give it a thumbs up. And we do want to hear from you. Uh, we want we want to hear some feedback with, with comments that you've made. Uh, hopefully they're nice comments, but if they're not, we'll take those too. Uh, we try to answer every single one and we just look forward to uh, you guys engaging with us and let us know what you think. Guys, thanks a lot. We'll see you again next week.